Dr. Jirian is back with us now with a look at a question on one of your minds. Here it is. How do I know if my back pain is caused by a herniated disc? Very That's good question. What is a herniated disc? Let's start with that. You know, I love that question because it's one of the most common discussions I have in the emergency room. And usually I show graphics. So I want to show you guys what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So in our spine, we've got bones. Those are our vertebrae in white. And between each bone, there are cushions or discs. That's highlighted in blue. And in certain cases, that disc can herniate or bulge out and push on important nerves. And then that is what gives you symptoms. If it happens in your neck, it can be in your arm. If it happens in your lower back, it's most often in your leg. And I just want to show you some of the common symptoms. Number one, pain. That's what brings people into the emergency room. Not everyone who has a herniation will get pain, but of course when it comes, it can be unbearable. Other and not symptoms, even in the back necessarily. Not necessarily in the back because you can have these types of injuries everywhere, but most commonly in the back, most commonly in the lower back. And then numbness or tingling. And that's because when that pressure goes on that nerve, it blocks out its ability to work. And so that's what leads to those symptoms of numbness and tingling aside from pain. And then also we have one more here. It's weakness, uh, and that comes because, again, one of the functions of nerves is to connect the message from the brain to the lower extremity or the arm, and so pain, numbness, mm. weakness, those are the most concerning signs. When there's an abrupt change or when you have significant symptoms, that's when you have to really make sure that it's not causing impingement or really important structures. Right. That sounds really painful, but just like kind of on a scale of painfulness, like just regular back pain versus a herniated disc, what's Eva, the difference Eva, this kind there? of pain is usually 10 out of 10, enough to bring you into the emergency room, and the treatment can be variable. Sometimes it can be mild, which you can treat with things like NSAIDs or ibuprofen. Sometimes it can be more significant. Those patients need more aggressive pain control. And as we were discussing, some patients need injections of things like cortisone. And then when it gets really, really bad, those patients need surgery. Um, but one of the best ways to prevent this is just basic things that we can do in our everyday life. And then also understanding the value of physical therapy. Yeah, well, give us some examples. I'm sure you don't want people to wait until they're feeling 10 out of 10 pain. How do we prevent it? You know, number one, making sure that our core is stable. Our muscles help to stabilize our spine. So the more muscle you've got, the less pressure and the weight that you've got on your spine. Also, posture. You wouldn't think it's that important, but sitting up at the desk or sitting at your chair is really important because if you sit appropriately, again, you take that weight off of your spine. And then you want to prevent lifting inappropriately. You remember, we all know this. You don't want to lift with your back. You want to lift with your thighs. And jobs like repetitive lifting and prolonged sitting, those can increase your risk. So you want to make sure you try to divvy it up and be variable in your day. Your southern etiquette school, great. I all of a sudden pulled my shoulder back. I saw back. that. I <laughs> saw that. Great, great example. Yes, love that. Fantastic. All right, so folks, we would always love to hear from you. You can hit us up on Instagram. All your medical questions at ABCGMA3.